how to do our CNC project. So, CNC project again, what that is, is you take your material and the machine will go through and carve out whatever you make into that material for you. So we're gonna go through that right now. So on your screen, you should have something that says V-carve. It might say V-carve desktop, it might say version nine, version 10, doesn't really matter. Or you go to the start menu, all the way down to V, to VCarve Desktop. If you don't have that, let me know. And then open VCarve Desktop right there. Um, it might be possible that you have Aspire. Um, so if you have something right here that says Aspire, so this is version Aspire 10.0. Uh, Aspire and VCarve are made by the same company. Uh, either one, they work just pretty much similarly aspires the next version up it's the much more expensive version because uh, it adds a lot more of 3d modeling software into the CNC software not a big deal for us because we're going to be doing all of our 3d modeling in something else like inventor or on shape or whatever all right so when we first open here let me go ahead and get my face out of here when we first open this is our menu what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file. So when I hit create new file, first screen that comes up right here, it says job setup. So this is where we're going to set up everything from the very beginning. So with ours, we're going to have 10 inches by 10 inches and our thickness is going to be half an inch right there. So for this project, if yours is not set up already, right here, width should say 10. The height should say 10, and the thickness should say 0 0.5. Um, if you do 1 slash 2, and then type equals, that'll do the same thing as uh, 0 0.5. But anyway, 10, 10, 0.5. The zero position, this is very important. This is where the machine thinks it's the top of it is right there. Um, so when your bit comes down, let's say this is my spinning bit, does it start right here on the top or does it start down here at the bottom of it where the machine is? For us, uh, let's just use the material surface as the top. So right here, material surface instead of machine bed, so material surface, and then XY datum position. So this is where our zero is on our XY axis. So we're gonna use the bottom left corner. So what this is doing is this, we're telling the computer, we're telling the machine that our zero point is this corner right here on the top bottom left corner. There's other times where you would use the center, like if I wanted the very center of it, like this. Um, different jobs, different projects have different requirements. Some things make it easier, but we're gonna go ahead and set it in the bottom left. Modeling resolution, this is just how good the graphics look on the software. And then appearance is just the preview. It's set up for different types of wood. Doesn't really matter. I'll just leave it at whatever it is. So I'm gonna hit okay. So here I am at the main screen right here. So a couple different things. I've got, up at the very top, I've got 2D view and 3D view. You're gonna go back and forth between these a lot. So 2D view is where I do all my drawing. And then 3D view, after I do the preview, this is where it's gonna preview it. So you'll see what it looks like, what it could look like in real life. Um, to go back, you just, click back to 2D view up here. So you might go back and forth between these two a lot. File operations, this is where our save, open, import vectors, import bitmaps, so we'll use those buttons a lot probably. Um, cut, paste, undo, redo. Create vectors, so this is where we have our drawing circles, drawing shapes, uh, where we can add some text text on a curve, and then this button right here that says trace bitmap. It's a little bird right here. I just call it the bird button because it's a little bird. Uh, we'll use that one a lot as well because that when you bring in a picture, like if I want to bring in this picture right here, uh, we bring in the picture of Mickey Mouse and then we trace it out. And I'll get into that also. 
transform objects. This is where you can move things, resize, rotate, flip things, distort, align. This align button is really useful because what that does is, let's say this rectangle right here uh, I already made. If I hit align, I can say align it to the center of my material, which what that means is it will center it left and right. It'll center it up and down, put it right in the middle. So close. All right. Edit objects. Um, most of these won't be too useful for us, but they're all there. You can look through them all. Um, and then offset. So if I have a shape here and I want to make it bigger, I can, let's say, offset it outwards. Let's say two inches. Hit offset. It now takes that two inches larger. Uh, do array copies, copying it circular. All right, plate production. We won't need most of that stuff. All right, let's get going here. I'm going to delete these and I'm going to show you some of these tools here. All right, first thing is shapes. Shapes are really easy. Uh, if I want a circle, draw a circle, draw ellipse, draw a rectangle, draw a polygon, which is just basically anything with more than, you know, four sides. Um, if I wanted a 11-sided figure, I could click 11 and it would give me an 11-sided figure. All right, I'm gonna hit delete. Um, if you are trying to get rid of something, click it and press delete on the keyboard, not backspace, but delete, and that will delete it. Um, star kind of works the same way as polygon, like if I wanted a seven-pointed star, look at that, I've got a seven-pointed star, cool. The line tool you might use a lot, so this if I need to just make some lines or connect some things, yeah, line tool. Arc tool, same thing. I just need to make some arcs. Cool. All right. The text tool. Let's go into the text tool right here. So if I want to add some text, like I'm going to write, I'm going to click that. And I need to do two things. One is I need to tell it where on the screen I want it. And I need to tell it what I actually want it to say. So I'm going to click kind of over here. And I'm going to say... Uh, I'm just going to put engineering is fun. So you can see as I type it, it shows up there. Um, the camera. Sorry. There we go. When I press numbers on my keyboard, it changes the camera. Um, so you see as I can type up here, it'll show up up there. To edit it, edit the box over there in the corner. Um, if I close out of this, so now this is here, and I can double click to move it around. But if I want to go back to editing it, if I double click it again, that doesn't work. But if I hit the text button over here, if I have it highlighted and I hit text, that brings up that editing screen again. Uh, you can change the font. So the font drop down here, change it to whatever you want. Some of them will work well with the CNC. Some of them won't work very well with the CNC. It's just kind of a trial and error thing. Um, if you're really not sure, there's one called Rockwell or Rockwell Condensed. This one CNCs very well. Um, so if you're not sure, just use that one. But feel free to try anything else. You can experiment. You can see the preview after you make it just to see if you like it or not. But I'm going to make Rockwell Condensed. Uh, if I want it a little bit bigger, text height, I can, let's say, I want it at one inch. It's going to make it one inch tall. Uh, bold, itali uh, centered, right justified, left justified. And the anchor point. What the anchor point is, is just kind of this point right here. Like I'm telling it, if you look at the scale up top, it is 1.1 inches over, and it is... 5.8 inches up, you don't really need to worry about that. 
that's like if I wanted to say I need something exactly at two inches over and three inches up, I could come over here and say two inches over and three inches up. But I don't need to do that. All right, so I'm going to hit OK. Engineering is fun. Now, if you wanted to what's called, uh, what do what they call it? Text on a curve. If I wanted this to be curved like this, what I first need to do is make a curve. So I'm going to click this draw arc button. I'm going to click right here. I'm going to click right here and I'm going to lift that up. Now let's make it a happy face. All right. And then I'm going to hit close. So now I have a curve right here, this arc. I have my text up here. So what I need to do is I need to select a single line of text and the curve to wrap it onto. So I'm going to select my text, I'm going to hold down shift on the keyboard, and I'm going to select my curve. So now both of those are selected. So again, click, hold down shift, click, and now when I hit text on a curve, you can see it takes my text and puts it on that curve. You get different options, you can space it out a little bit more, a little bit less, however you want. Above the curve, on the curve, below the curve left, middle, right, text on the other side if it's upside down for some reason, um, keep it vertical, so a bunch of different options you can play with. Just put it, uh, doo -doo. just kind of space it out a bit, hit close, cool. All right, so that looks good. Now, I'm done with this curve. Let's see, if we hit delete on that, then that's there. Now I can still go back to the text tool and I can still come in here and I can still edit it if I need to, but I'm not going to. Um, so there's good. So that's the text tool. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy to use. Um, let's just go ahead and let's do the preview on this just to see what it looks like. So anytime you want to do a preview, you need to use this bar here that's called toolpath. So the toolpath is literally the path that the tool takes when it is cutting it out. So this is how the machine itself is going to cut it. Um, you're telling the machine how you want it to do it because there's different ways you can cut it all out. Um, so for this one let's use this v-carve engraving toolpath. So it's this second one down right here. Now this toolpath button, whenever you click on it and then if you click away it's gonna disappear. I think that's really annoying. So if, if you think that's annoying, if you hit this little pin right here in the top right it says auto hide. If I pin that toolbar, now this toolbar will stay here forever. Very nice to have because I don't want it to keep disappearing. All right, so we're going to use this V card. First thing I need to do is I need to select whatever it is I want to carve. So I'm going to select my text right here. I'm going to use this V carve engraving toolpath. And here are some options right here. All right, start depth. That's where we're starting. We're starting at the top of our piece, so we're going to leave that at zero. Flat depth, we're going to leave that alone for right now. The tool, this is very important. We need to tell it which bit we are using. We are going to be using a 90 degree bit. So I'm gonna hit select. I'm gonna go over to bits, imperial tools. So I'm in imperial tools. To V bits, because it's shaped like a V. To a 90 degree half inch bit. So when I click on that, so what that means, so this bit right here, so like a ball nose is round on the bottom, a, oh, this doesn't have my other ones, all right, a V bit right here is V shaped on the bottom. This angle right here is 90 degrees, that's why we have a 90 degree bit. A 60 degree bit has a different angle right here, 60 degrees. All right, so I'm going to click on 90 degree, one half inch. All this stuff, don't worry about this right now. I'm just gonna hit select. 
and it should say v-bit 90 degree half inch diameter right there that's what we want all right use clearance tools that'll just leave all that blank uh, just leave all this alone right now and I'm gonna hit calculate now when I hit calculate what the computer's gonna do is it's going to figure out how I need to move that bit or how it needs to move that bit to carve out whatever we wanted in our 2d view you'll notice this red line here so that is the how the bit itself is actually gonna move so the bit if that red line is what they call traveling so it's going to come over here, the green means it's going to go down, it's going to do some carving, come up, do some carving, come up, do some carving, come up. All right. You'll also notice if I look at this E right here, let's see, there we go. That looks weird. I've got these weird little angles right here that looks like it doesn't, isn't going to look good. But once I hit the preview, you see, this is what the bit is actually going to do, but because of the way the bit is shaped, it will give us what we want. Um, to move around in this screen, I'm just clicking and dragging. That's giving me this orbit. Uh, the scroll wheel scrolls back and forth, or you can right click. If you're on a trackpad, if you hold down right click, you can zoom in and out. Uh, I'm holding down the scroll wheel to move around like that. Now, if when I hit preview, preview all toolpaths, you see, that went kind of fast. Let's do that again. I'm going to hit reset preview. I'm actually going to turn the speed down so you can actually see it. So I'm going to hit preview all toolpaths. And what it's going to do is the computer's going to simulate the machine going through. So I'm going to hit preview all toolpaths. And you see, this is simulating that bit carving into the wood right there, carving into whatever material you're using. I'm going to bring that speed up a little bit. Alright, and it just went through and did it all. Now, that E that looked weird, or all the corners of my pieces that looked kind of weird, once I zoom in here, you can see now I have an actually actual sharp corner right there because the way that bit moved, because of that angle of that bit, it gives me a nice clean corner when it moves in and out of the material. So that's why it looks weird with your preview like this, but then once you preview it and once it actually carves it, it will go through and it will look much better. So this is kind of simulating it again. All right, I'm going to bring that speed up here again just to get that over with. All right. Now, if you ever make a change to something, like let's put a little circle right here. Let's hit apply. Let's uh, put a square right here. Let's hit apply. Cool. Like if I make a change or if I move this around or something like let's move this up here when I go back to my preview so to go back to my preview is this preview tool pass right here just because I moved it around doesn't mean anything when I go to my preview it's still that old one and let's say I move this up here and let's recalculate so I went over here recalculate what that's doing is it's moving it from down there to up here when I go back to my preview, the old one is still there, and the new one is up there. So to get rid of the old one, I have to hit Reset Preview, right here. And now I can hit Preview Toolpaths again. All right. So anytime you make a change, you're going to want to Reset Preview, Preview Toolpaths again. All right, close. All right, let's put that back down. I'm going to delete that. All right, I talked uh, about the alignment tool. Alignment. Um, so if I wanted to make sure that this is centered on my material, I can click and I can drag it, and it will usually give me a little line. There we go. You see that little vertical line right there? That means it's centered. Or it means it's lined up with something. There we go. 
Yeah, it doesn't look centered. Um, but if I want to make sure it's right in the middle, I hit that alignment tool, this uh, select it, align selected objects. This button, align to material, aligns it left and right. So I'll hit that, it'll move it over to the middle. This button right here aligns it top to bottom, so I'll click that one. Or if, since that's such a common thing, this one right here in the middle aligns both of them. Boom. All right. Let's move it down. Close. All right. Um, adding shapes is pretty simple, but the thing I know what you all want to do is add some pictures. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up Google Images. And I like hockey. Let's, let's, uh, let's do the old Caps logo. Caps logo. All right. So some pictures will work very well. Some pictures will not work very well. The simpler your picture, you know, the better it'll end up looking. Like if I have a really complicated thing, like this one's okay. Um, this one's not very good. This has a lot of extra stuff on there. Um, a simple picture, this one will work great. This one will work great. This one will work great. But a simpler picture will work better. Um, something like a photograph, you could try it. Sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't. But let's just go ahead and get uh, this thing right here. Cool. I'm going to right click. I'm going to hit copy image. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to right click and hit paste. And there's a picture. Now, one thing to be aware of is that this is a raster and not a vector. We need a vector. The difference is, if I zoom in all the way on this, after a while I'm going to start seeing some pixels. All right? It's blurry, it's not a clear line. What the machine needs is a perfectly straight line to follow, or you know, a perfect curve to follow. So if I zoom in all the way on here, perfect line, there's no pixels. This is a vector. This right here with pixels is called a raster. We don't want a raster, we want a vector. Luckily, we have this nice little bird button right here that says trace bitmap. Fit, bit, uh, fit vectors to select a bitmap. What this does is I can click on that, and uh, there's a bunch of different options here. I'm just going to hit black and white, I'm going to hit preview, and I'm going to hit apply. I'll go through all those options in a second. But now what it did is it took my picture right here and it traced it out. And you'll notice if I zoom in all the way, I no longer have pixels. I have nice straight lines right here. So this right here is my vector line, whereas this blurry pixelated nonsense is my raster. This nice vector line is what the machine needs. The nice thing about vectors is that if you enlarge it, it will always stay perfect. No matter how big I get it, you won't see the pixels like you do on a rastered image. All right, let's undo that. So after I trace it, and again, I'll go through all those options in a second, I don't need this picture anymore. So I'm just going to click it and hit delete. I don't need that anymore. If I have something like this little trademark logo, or if there's like a watermark on it, you can get rid of that. So I'm going to, yeah, here, let's get rid of that. So I'm going to right click it. I'm going to say ungroup objects, ungroup back into original layers. And what that does is it separates all of these. So like these stars are separate, the letters are all separate. So I can click that, I can delete it. Or you could keep it there, your choice. All right. So there's that. Let's regroup that again. So I'm going to right click and say group objects. So now that treats that all as one thing. Uh, let's center that in the middle. I'm going to align it, center it, close. And let's add the V carve to that as well. So I made this one before. If you click on that old toolpath, that highlights in pink. Um, but if I go to preview, 
and I set reset preview, preview all toolpaths, notice my thing is not there anymore, and also that's still up higher because I did not recalculate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this toolpath. I'm going to highlight everything, and I'm going to hit calculate. Now again, you can see I have my old one there. You're like, why is that still there? Because I didn't hit reset preview. So I'm going to hit reset preview. And now you can see it added not only my original letters, but that new picture that I traced. So I'm going to hit preview all toolpaths. And there we go. So there's a beautiful little picture right there. All right, so I'm going to go into more details in a little bit about the um, different options with the trace bitmap, how to save it, how to take it to the machine and everything.